the house full this morning. Lorena, did you want to say something real quick? This morning, as I was doing the counts for Sunday school, there was 80 in Sunday school. I don't ever remember seeing 80 in a regular Sunday school class. <laughs> Last Sunday, the teens kind of challenged everyone with the offerings. They won it last week, but you lost this week. We won. Lori's class had $14, but there was two close. The juniors had $13.05. Oh, Wayne's class had $13. But we all did good. Thank you. Good morning. I just have a really quick announcement for the teens. Our teen Bible study was supposed to be tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here, but because of volleyball, we're changing it to Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, and it will be here. And then uh, if you have the uh, access to the church calendar, which you can get that from the website, you will know that this Friday night at 6.30, it's the married couple's night out at the levee. So... Bring your spouse with you. Uh, we'll meet at GameWorks at the levee at 6.30 this coming Friday. All right, if you were in my Sunday school class this morning, raise your hand. We were beat by a bunch of little kids. I just want you to know that. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure that you know that. Uh, we were beat by little kids. Let's pray and invite the Lord into the service. Can we do that? Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, God, so thankful for your blessings, so thankful for your presence, God. We are looking forward, God, to what you have in store for us this morning and tonight, Lord. God, let your spirit have its way, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing if you can. We got two birthdays this morning. Uh, Lily Dela Cruz. She turned 45 this week, right? And Caleb, he's turning a big eight tomorrow. And Caitlin, oh, come on up. I didn't know. Anybody else? Any more birthdays? Who? Tiffany. Riley. That's right. Riley's was just the other day. Come on. Anybody else? Oh, Mary. Who? Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte and Lori, come on down. Come on down. Wow, I don't think we've ever had this many birthdays before in one service. All right. You. You can't count. You don't know how. Anyway, you're living on a different calendar, Bernardo. All right. Oh, happy birthday to you. a big hand and Caitlin looks like she needs a pair of shoes for her birthday so <clears throat> I don't know what it is women come to church and kick their shoes off but anyway how many have come to worship this morning there's a good spirit in here this morning won't you turn around shake somebody's hand say I'm glad you're in God's house you look beautiful and then if you have to repent uh the Bible says people's feet are beautiful, so. We're going to do glory to his name. Amen. If you feel led to get out of your seat and come up here and worship while we're doing praise and worship this morning, you come right up here and do it, okay? We want you just to have your liberty in the Lord this morning. I believe God's going to do something in this place. How many have come excited this morning? How many have come expecting God to do something this morning? How many realize that we serve the only God in the universe and it doesn't matter what ISIS does or whatever they do for Allah, but we serve God the Father. We serve Jehovah God. We serve Jesus Christ His Son. We serve the Holy Spirit, the, the Godhead, three in one this morning. And He deserves the glory. And we've come this morning to give glory to His name. Amen. Well, down at the cross where my Savior died, 
Down where from cleansing of sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to Oh, come on now, I said Glory to His name Oh, glory to His name There to my heart was the blood applied Glory Oh, come on, you do better than that praise we bless his name this morning we've come to worship him this morning he deserves the glory he deserves the honor no name under heaven this morning whereby we've been saved but only through the name of jesus there's no god in this world there's nothing this world can give you that deserves the glory only god god omnipotent who we serve this morning amen, amen. hallelujah i feel him this morning You deserve the glory. Come on, lift your hands and tell him. And the honor. Lord, we lift. Lord, we lift our hands. Oh, as we lift. As we lift your voice. Lord, you deserve. You deserve the glory. Oh, all the glory. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else. I believe that this morning, there is no one. You are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. Oh, bless his name. guys come on you deserve the glory 
and the honor. Let me hear your voices. Come on. Lord, we lift our hands and worship. As we live, come on. As we lift your Lord, holy you deserve name. the glory. Come on. You deserve the glory. Oh, all the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands and worship. As we lift your Why? Because he's great. Come on, punch it. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you believe that? Come on. There, if you believe our God's great, why don't you lift your hands and tell him, come on. You are great. You do miracles. So, oh, you're so great. You're so mighty. You're so lovely. You're more than anything. You're more than wonderful. You're more than awesome this morning. Oh, you are great. You do miracles. So his name, so yes, he is. There is no one else like you. There is no one. Oh, you are great. You do miracles so great. Oh, there's no one. Oh, there's no one. There is no one else like you. Bring the music way down. You deserve the glory. Let me hear you. Come on. And the Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we lift. As we lift your holy Oh, come on, lift your hands and tell him. You deserve the glory. And the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we lift your holy For you are great, come on. For you are great. So great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else. You are great, you do miracles. So great, there is no one else like you. There is no Come on, lift your hands and love on it this morning. Lord, I give you all of me this morning. I surrender all this morning. I give it all to you this morning. Sometimes we come and we have preconceived ideas. I was talking about in my Sunday school class this morning that sometimes we were talking about the church of Ephesus where God tells them you left your first love and he says remember from whence you're fallen and I was talking this morning when you get saved if you remember when that happened the Bible says we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and I never saw it this way and we're up here but after a while we get our eyes off of Jesus and we look at people and we look at circumstances and we look at the church and we look at the problems and we look at society and we look at the world we live in and our eyes begin to be dimmed and we forget that our love is not dependent upon our church upon people upon others upon what the world does but it's dependent upon Christ I'm as guilty and lately I've got my eyes off of Christ at times and seen things. But you know what? I'm, I'm big enough to say, Lord, forgive me and get me back up to that high place. Because when you're in that high place, you don't see below. You're looking up. You're soaring. That eagle, when you let that eagle go, he's soaring. He doesn't go down until he's ready to catch a fish. Whoa, there's a sermon there. I ain't got time to preach it. But he doesn't go down until it's time to catch a fish and get something to eat. He soars higher and higher as the wind goes beneath his wings. And you know what happens to that eagle? He gives it all to the wind. 
Can I tell you, if this morning you will give your all to the Spirit of God and the breath of God, He will take you places that you've ever been before. And like when we get to the point in this song where it says, I'm letting go and I'm releasing it all, He will soar you above every circumstance that you'll ever face and you'll come out a winner in the name of Jesus. Amen. Woo, I can preach this morning. It's going to be easy to preach, Wayne. All of me to you, O oh Lord, I surrender. Oh, come on now, let me hear you. Everything, all of me to you, O oh Lord. It's real simple. You new folks, you'll get it real easy. Everything, come on. I said everything. Oh, I give you all of me. Lord, to you. to you. You know, when you lift your hands, that's an act of surrender. I'm surrendering to you, Lord, everything. Everything. Lord, all of me. To you, Lord. What are you going to give him this morning? Listen to the words of this song. All my hurts. Come on. I said all of my hurts, all of my fears, all of my fears, all my heart, all of my heart, I all my plans this morning. Come on. I give you all I am. I 
give you everything. Everything. Lord, I give you all of me. God, you give him it all to him. Tell him he's great and greater to be praised this morning. We give it all to him this morning. Amen. We're switching it up this morning, guys. We're going to do one more. We're just going to do the chorus. You know this one. I feel it this morning. You believe we have a great God? Come on. How great is our God? Sing with me. How great is our God? Go see how great, how great is our God. Oh, come on, let me hear you sing it this morning. Come on. Well, we sing how great is a second verse way no listen to this verse i love this verse think about it well age to age he stands well time's in his hand come on well time is in his he's the beginning of the end the beginning and the end beginning of the end the beginning and the end oh i like this he's the godhead come on He's the Godhead, free Him. He's Father, Spirit, and Son this morning. Oh, and I'm glad He's the Lion and the Lamb. The Lion and the Lamb. Oh, the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, we sing how great is our There's nothing impossible. There's nothing too hard this morning. And oh, see how great, how great is our God. Get the music out for just a minute. You know, yesterday, people were getting on Facebook, changing their colors to what happened in France. And you know, there was a terrorist attack over there. But if the Christians would just stand up and take their authority, if you this morning believe God is great and take your authority over the devil, man, and realize when we do this part of the song that says he has the name above all names, in that name the demons fear and tremble. The demons fear and tremble. All we've got to do is speak his name in authority and it'll push the devil back. We as God's people need to stand up and take the authority. And I'm daring you this morning. I'm daring you. I don't care if you feel him or not. I don't care if you think I'm losing my mind up here this morning. But if you push through, I guarantee if you take the challenge, he'll meet you there this morning. And you can't say he's the name above all names. And he deserves the glory. And he deserves the honor. And he's Lord of Lords. And he's King of Kings. And not feel something down in your bones. I remember we were in the basement of the church when we first started. There was a young man there who said he was an atheist. He said he didn't believe in God. By the end of the service, he felt the power of God on his life. We got one right here this morning. He said he didn't believe in God, but he's up in the altars and he's seeking and praising God. Let me tell you, he's the name above all names. My God is not defeated. He's still strong. He's still powerful. And he's still omnipotent this morning. Oh, 
Lord, come on. Let me hear you. He's the name of all names. For he's the name of all. Let me hear you. He is worthy of all. And my heart, come on. Let me hear you. He's the name. For he's the name of name. He's worthy. Worthy of all praise. And my heart. I will sing praise. Now they're just going to play it. I want you to make up your own words right now to him. I don't care if it's hallelujah, glory to God, or speaking in tongues. You do what God tells you to do right now. Lord, how great is our God one more time this morning. Oh, and we sing how great. Give it all you got. Come on. Is our Lord, sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we sing how, oh, how great, how great. bless his name. Come on. Come on. Worship him this morning. Worship him this morning. Praise his name. Praise his name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to my chains are gone. going on here this morning is there is a, a sweet spirit that's sweeping through the place and God is dealing with some folks in a way that only they and God understand. I can hear the spirit up here right now. I can hear him speaking. God is just being real right now, being very real. Now, if you're new to this, I don't want you to panic, okay? This is just the good Lord moving on people blessing people. We talked a little bit in Sunday school this morning about God being real in this time that we're living in. And He is being very real. We have had numerous testimonies as of late about how, how many people they have been prayed for in our church. And God has provided a healing for their bodies. Now, the Bible says that you and I are more than capable of doing the same things that Christ did. And guess what Christ did? Christ laid hands on people and they were saved. Christ laid hands on people and they were healed. Christ laid hands on people and demons had to flee. Pastor, do we still deal with those things in 2015? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Steve gave a, a comment about something that happened this weekend in Paris. Saints, listen to me. That's the enemy. He is at work. He's doing his job. He's using people to bring pain and to bring woe to this world. Listen, you and I, we're Christians. We claim to be Christians. We claim to be born again. Some of us claim to be spirit-filled Christians. Guess what? 
if we are truly the Christians that we say we are, when we see these people praying, we will be raising our hands toward them and we will be praying for them and with them. Amen. When we see a brother or sister struggling in this life, we will go out of our way to reach the throne room for them. Somebody say amen. If we have a brother or sister that's depressed, guess what? We will go to God for them and we will not stop praying until God moves upon that need. Listen, the Bible tells us to pray for our world, to pray for our leaders. You may not like our leaders, but the Bible demands that we pray for our leaders. And guess what? Right now, our leaders need to know who God is and they need to know that He is real. So if you can and if you want to and I understand if you stood too long will you stand with me one more time please and after we're done with this prayer if you want to sit back you're more than welcome I understand it I understand it thank you guys I appreciate that will you raise your hands we're going to pray for these folks that are in the altar here right now we're going to pray for our world and if you feel the need, you can pray for the person sitting next to you, standing next to you. I feel God in this place. I feel God. I felt Him yesterday, but I feel Him today as well. Can you feel Him this morning? Father, we are coming before you now, God. We want to acknowledge your presence. We want to acknowledge the presence of your Spirit, God. Father, I want to acknowledge, God, the feeling that I have in my soul right now, God, the touch that I am feeling upon myself right now, God. Father, God, I thank you for that. God, I thank you that you're real. God, I thank you that you're healing people right now, God. I thank you, God, that you're delivering people right now, God. Father, I'm thankful, God, that you were able to comfort a, 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 a family, God, yesterday, Lord, that was in pain, God. They were, they were struggling. They were dealing with something difficult, God. I'm so thankful for that. God, I'm thankful, God, that even though our world is in crisis right now, God, you're still God. Father, I still believe in you. God, I still have faith in you. God, I know that you're still on your throne. God, that I know you're still up to the things, God, that you said you were up to. And God, you're about to perform something awesome. You're about to do something great, God. Something, Father God, that's going to blow our minds. God, these that are in the altars up here, Lord, Father, you know what they need. You know what they're struggling with, God. You know what they're battling with, God. Father, touch them right now, I pray, God. Move up on them right now. Be real to them right now, God. Be real to them. Be real to them. Would you give God a big hand clap, please? Will you shout out a word of praise to God right now? Let me hear you. Oh, man, that sounds awesome. You couple praise with hand claps. Man, it does something in the place. Can you feel that? Can you feel that? Will you keep praising him? Let me hear you shout out some more praise to God right now. Would you do that, please? I'm not trying to drum something up. I want you to feel what I'm feeling up here. God is real. God is real. God is real. Turn around and lay a hand on somebody and just say a prayer over them real quick. Would you do that, please? Say a prayer over them in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name say a prayer over him. amen well I'm a little tired of the devil's games keeping me in bondage through my trouble and pain I can live better I will go another day I'm here to claim deliverance in Jesus name come on let me hear I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy. Yeah, He's all over me. Come on, let me hear you sing it this morning. Well, I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Lord. I like this part. Come on, I've been loose this morning. Well, I know I've been loose. I've been set free. Well, pardon me a moment and I have a jubilee for the joy of the Holy Ghost. He's all over me. Well, I know I've been loose and I've been set free. Well, pardon me a moment and I have a jubilee for the joy of the Holy Ghost. Let me hear you sing that coming. I've been loose. I've been loose. I've been set free. 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 I've been set free.
joy of the Lord can linger in me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost. Oh, one more time. I feel the joy. Come on. I feel the joy of the Lord falling. First on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. right now if you don't mind so if our ushers Brian and Jay if you don't mind coming forward please listen God is very real in this place very very real God is very real to say to you, you folks are a very giving church, and I, I'm so appreciative of that. It's because of your giving we were able, are able to minister to so many folks, not just within our church, but outside our church. We've helped some folks here lately. Tito put a, sent out some videos, and I actually posted on Lori's page this morning. Shows him ministering in a very large crowd of people, and it looks like all men. I'm not sure if it's only men, but he's ministering in a large crowd back in his home country of El Salvador. You're sponsoring him. You're supporting him. Amen. You're doing that. So you can see your money when you're giving it to this church. It's not staying only inside this church, but it's blessing the people in and outside of our church. We're supporting missionaries in Scotland. We're supporting missionaries in Western Europe. We're supporting missionaries in Africa, amen. We're supporting other churches throughout the United States. And this is where all of your money is going to, amen. So if you have your offering, put it in your hand and hold it up, would you please? Even if you don't have an offering, would you hold up your hand? I want you to pray that the good Lord would bless this offering right now. Pray with me and pray that he would continue to multiply it. Would you do that, please? Father, we pray right now, God, that you would bless this offering, God, that you would anoint it, God, that you would use it for its intended purpose, Lord. Father, God, help us to see many souls saved, many souls changed, great God. Bless it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hold on. Just play something right now. Jesus just the same Yes, I'm 
I'm going on about Jesus just the same. Well, you may false accuse me, scandalize my name, but I'm going on about Jesus just the same. That never way is a straight way. I have no crooks or bends. I gotta go on for Jesus, cause I know he's my best friend. When the enemy's all around me, tears from my eyes. to him anyway so we are so thankful for that amen musicians could I ask you after church to stick around for a few moments please and sound people I appreciate that Matthew chapter 6 and verses 22 and 23 now in my Sunday school class we're probably going to go over these verses in detail next week but I want to preach these some this morning Matthew chapter 6 Verse 22 and 23. Are you happy to be in God's house this morning? Yeah. Right. Verse 22 says, Your eye is a lamp that provides light to, for your body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. When your eye is bad, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, hmm, how deep, how deep that darkness is. Let's pray. Father, again, we come before you this morning, God, so thankful for you to be in your house, thankful for the words, God, that we've heard so far, for the praise that we have participated in, great God, for the Sunday school lessons, God, the teachings you've given us this morning, God, for the special touches that your spirit has moved in us and moved on us, great God. Father, I pray right now that you would help us to bring this message forth, God, and allow it to be a blessing to all of your folks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give God another hand clap, please. Here's a little background. In the Sermon on the Mount and in James chapter 1, 6 through 8, we get an important thought. You can't walk in two directions at the same time. 
You can't operate in drive and reverse at the same moment. You can't focus on light and darkness simultaneously. Staying in focus is a challenge for everyone. Somebody say amen. James chapter 1 verses 6 through 8 says this, But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all that they do. We've learned in our Sunday school class that some of the teachings, many of the teachings that Christ has given us, they can be very difficult in carrying out. Somebody say amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus not only performed miracles, Jesus not only cast out demons, but he taught throughout his whole ministry. He spoke very clearly about the things that you and I should be doing. Somebody say amen. As we walk in this life, especially if we say that we are Christians, especially if we say that we are disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. Something I showed the class this morning is there is a, I don't know, a poll out there, whatever you want to call it, that says there are at least a million people who claim to be Christians. But when you really dig down into, the, into their definition of what Christian is, their definition of Christian may not truly be what the Scripture says a Christian is. You see... This world thinks Christian, and Sarah gave a good definition this morning. This world says basically a Christian is somebody who is not Muslim, who is not Buddhist. But the Bible says that a Christian is something a whole lot more than something that you're not. The Bible says that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, it says that you are so much more or you should be so much more. Somebody say amen. The scripture verse here in verse 22, it says, Your eye is a lamp that provides light in your body. How many of you wear glasses? How many of you should be wearing glasses and you don't? There we go. Okay. How many of you noticed or remember the first time your eye started to go bad? For me, I remember... Looking down a hallway at the hospital where I work at, I remember looking down a hallway and thinking, man, I sure used to be able to see those people clearly. And then, Art, I realized that all I was seeing was blurry things down the hallway. I used to be able to identify Paula from a great distance, but, you know, when my eye started to change, you know, I started to realize I'm not sure who that is, to be quite honest with you. I just know there's somebody there. And I remember somebody asking me a question. They say, Wayne, do you see the leaves on the tree out there? I'm like, well, duh, yeah, I see the leaves on the tree out there. But when I got a pair of glasses that changed my eyesight, I'm like, oh, I get it now. I didn't just see the leaves, but I could actually see the leaf in the midst of the leaves. You know what I mean? Because now my eyesight was in focus. I was actually able to see the detail, somebody say amen, of what was in front of me. These scripture verses here basically says your eye is a lamp that provides light for your body. Without our eyesight, saints of God, we're in trouble, amen. Without our eyesight, everything that we do changes. Without our eyesight, we have to have a special kind of a knowledge, amen, to learn how to read with our fingers, amen. Without our eyesight, we have to learn how to trust in people and things to get us around. We have to learn to lean on things. We have to learn to feel our way through things when our eyesight goes bad. 
The scripture verse goes on to say, it says, when your eye is good, it's changing here. When your eye is good, your body is filled with light. When you can see things clearly, somebody say amen. It's easy to know what you're dealing with. But how many of you know that there is a physical eyesight and there is a spiritual eyesight? And when we're in this scripture verse here this morning, we're talking about a spiritual eyesight. We're talking about an eyesight that when we're looking at things, what do you actually see? When you look at your brother and sister sitting next to you this morning, what do you actually see? Are you just seeing an acquaintance that you know in church? When you see people in church, are you looking at them? Or are you saying, you know, that person's extremely annoying? I'm getting some feedback on this one. Amen. Are you sitting next to somebody that's annoying? Amen. If you are, maybe you need to move. Amen. I, I, I'm just saying. Okay. Not sure. But when your eyesight is good, your whole body is filled with light. Can I tell you, in truly studying Jesus' teachings and in comparing it to my life, and how many of you know that's what we're supposed to do? When we read the Bible, we're supposed to apply it to us. How many of you know too many Christians read the Bible and apply it to somebody else? Yeah, you get in trouble when you do that, amen? You're supposed to read it and apply it to you, amen? So when I read this and I apply it to myself, I realize that sometimes what I see is not always good. What I allow to enter in to this body through these things right here, it's not always good. Pastor, are you saying you're watching bad things? That's not what I'm saying. And that's true, though, because if you are watching bad things, then guess what? What's coming in is not a positive thing. Somebody say amen. What you bring in should be holy. Amen. What you put in there should be holy. Why? Because if you're putting in holy things, holy things will come out. If you're putting in Christ-like things, Christ-like things will come out. Somebody say amen. But pastor, what if there is something wrong with your vision? For me, it seems like every time I get an eye exam, my eyes go bad. Get worse. I go in and the doctor says, well, your eyesight hasn't changed much. So here's a prescription and go get glasses. Go get a new uh, pair of glasses. Just like this last time, Steve, when I got my new set of glasses, now I notice I have to do this when I'm reading. I didn't do that before. My kids make fun of me now because I'm reading and I have to do this to see something. They laugh at me. I never had to do that before. But now I know that I have to adjust the way that I'm looking at something. Amen? So if I'm allowing these bad things to come into me, guess what? I have to adjust the way I'm looking at things. Or let me say this, what I'm looking at. You see, in the church world, speaking spiritually, saints, listen to me. It's easy for us to have bad eyesight. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. Let you think on that. It's easy for us to have bad eyesight. Because our eyesight oftentimes is skewed by what's already inside of here. Somebody say amen. By what's already inside of here. If we have lived a horrible life, and you can define what horrible is, okay? If we've lived a horrible life, it's going to have an impact on the things that we see. It's going to have an impact on the things that we look at. We can use a child again this morning as an example. A child will do and act out the things that they see. A child will do and act out the things that they hear. And how many of you know this morning, parents, that your children are watching you more than you realize they're watching you? They're learning from you more than you realize they are learning from you. If you're used to saying slang words, guess what? The child will grow up saying slang words. Amen. If you're used to being always positive and very uplifting like I am, then your children will be the same way. (laughs) 
They're awake. I, I didn't get that down. Anyway. Your children will do what you do. And guess what? You will do what you're always seeing and what you're always watching, what your mind is always fixed on. Amen. You know a problem with church today, saints? Many times the people that come in, they have negative views of the church. And I've learned this in my pastoring, Sarah, that there will be many people that walk into God's house or into a new church service. We've never seen them before, and they will walk in with a preconceived notion of that church. And the reason they have that preconceived notion, Steve, is based on the last church that they were in. Somebody say amen. And because the last church they were in, the pastor did it this way, the, the choir leader did it this way, the musician did it this way, the teacher did it this way, and I expect this church to do the same thing. Can I tell you something? Not all churches are the same. Can I tell you something? Not all preachers are the same. Not all Sunday school teachers are the same. Not all worship leaders are the same. But if that's your thought, you're going to get what you're looking for. You're going to find every time what you're searching for. Do you understand that? So if you left the church before and you're walking into this one and you're thinking, I'm expecting the preacher to be a jerk, it's what you're going to find. The preacher here, the pastor here is awesome. Praise God. I want you to know that. Thank you. Thank you. But I want you to know when you go on to that next church and you leave here, the pastor probably isn't awesome. I'm just saying, okay? But you do get what you're looking for. Somebody say amen. If you walk in being hurt somewhere else and you walk into this one expecting to be hurt here, guess what you're going to find? You're going to find hurt here. Can I be very honest with you this morning? There is no church on the planet that is perfect. There is no pastor on the planet that is perfect. There is none. They might tell you that they are. They might really try to beat it in your head that they're really awesome, and hopefully one day you'll really think that, amen. But guess what? They're not always awesome. I have learned something the hard way, saints of God. The closer you get to God, the stronger the battles are at times. Somebody say amen. But can I tell you what those battles do? Those battles change the way you look at things. I said it yesterday at a funeral and I said it in Sunday school this morning. Life changes your perception. And you determine if it's bad or good. If you look at everything that happens as negative, guess what? Your outlook is going to be negative. The way you treat people is going to be negative. But if you can take the things that God has allowed you to go through and see it through his eyesight. I'll use Tito as an example here. If anybody was in this room, you all remember what he said. The last minister's meeting before he left us. He made the comment, I am ready for God to use me any way he wants to. Nobody in that room understood the impact of the words he was saying. But we sure all learned it really quick. Now, if it were me that was picked up by ICE and whatever those names of those groups are and throw me in jail, I'm not so sure that my perception of what was going on would be as positive as his. But he took every opportunity he had to preach the gospel to the people that he was around. When he was, in Louis, when he was in Boone County, he was preaching. When he was in Louisville jail, he was preaching. When he was in Chicago waiting to be deported, he was preaching. I think there was another stop between Chicago and El Salvador, he was preaching. When he got back to El Salvador, he was preaching. And you know what? From time to time, give God a hand clap for that. From time to time, he'll call me up and say, Pastor Wayne. I love it when he says that. I need advice. He's asking me for advice. I have never been through the trials that he has been through. But the only advice I can give him based on the trials that I have gone through is trust in your God. Everything you look at, Tito, it's not always black and white. 
Everything you look at, Tito, it's not always bad. Somebody say amen. He looked at a shed down there and saw a church. Amen. You and I would have looked at a shed and simply saw a shed. You see the difference? He looked at a shed and said, I can put a roof on it, Tom. I can put a stage in it. We can buy some instruments and we can have church. Amen. Whereas most preachers today, Steve Farrell in the United States, they would say, there ain't no way in the world I can minister in something like that. There ain't no way in the world God can use a shed to see people saved. I don't even think they have bathrooms in that shed. God forbid I would go to a church without bathrooms in it. But you know what he did a couple weeks ago in that shed? He started a Sunday school class. Ooh, about to get happy up here. He looked at those little babies running around that shed and said, you know, if we can grab a hold of them, we can teach them. If we can grab a hold of them and we teach them Norman Rice, guess what? They may grow up and they may have an impact on our country this morning or this year. We might see the crime rate in El Salvador come down. Somebody say amen. We might see souls saved in El Salvador. And all that is based on his perception of being deported back to his country and doing ministry in a shed. And he's asking me for advice. Why would he ask me for advice? We didn't start ministry in a shed. We started ministry in a basement. We were doing ministry in a hotel, Norm. We were doing ministry at another church. We were doing ministry here. It depends on how you look at it. Julie said something to me the other day. It kind of irritated me a little bit, and I apologize for my reaction. But she told me that some people, when they looked up where our church was, they're like, it's in a strip mall. Where are you taking me? I got a little irritated. Use the Christian wording for it, righteously indignant. Thank you very much. <laughs> Same thing. I said, you know, if they don't want to come to this church, they can go somewhere else. I don't I care. I love my strip mall church. <laughs> but you know what? I think maybe the reason I was like that, and I'm not trying to justify my behavior. I was probably just tired of being a jerk sometimes like that. But I know what we've poured into this place. I know what's taking place in this building, Amen. Dave Turner. I've had police officers walk in here and say, you know, Pastor Wayne, I'm sure glad I'm walking in here and this is a church because back years ago when I walked in here, I had to thump heads. Isn't that cool? We looked at a bar and we saw a church. Somebody say amen. amen. We looked at a bar and said, thank you, God. We're not going to the hotel anymore. We looked at a bar and said, thank you, God. I don't have to share a building with nobody else anymore. Thank you, God, for it. Thank you, God. We can go into a bar. Mm. Some people might say, thank you, God, and go to a bar and wash away my sins, get, or wash away my, my, my wife thoughts and my children thoughts. But you know what? Now you can walk into a former bar and wash away all of your sins. Yeah. Depends on how you look at it. The scripture says if the light that you're bringing in is good, then guess what? It's going to be good throughout. And saints, I want you to hear me this morning. It's up to us. It's up to us to figure out what's going on inside of us. When we're looking at things, do we always see negative? I know people like that. Everything is negative. I don't like to be around people like that long. They weary me. They wear me out. Negative, negative, negative. I get a little bit of negative because I'm a little bit negative too at times. But always negative? God has never done anything good for you at all? You have never had anything good take place in your life? Nowhere in your life? God has never been good to you ever? Come on. I look at things like yesterday, what took place in here. There but for the grace of God. Did you hear that? We had two boxes up here from where he had been cremated. There but for the grace of God. 
Some years ago in my sinful lifestyle, guess what? I was probably headed down that path. Why? Because I was aggravated. I was agitated. I was irritable. I didn't like people too much. I was angry. Why was I angry? Because life wasn't going the way I thought it should go. You know what changed my look, my eyesight, my perception of things? Some people that came into my life and led me to the Lord. Was it an overnight change, Pastor Wayne? No way. I'm still changing. I'm still being sanctified. Somebody say amen. I'm still being rounded out by the Lord. I'm still being perfected by the Lord. I haven't figured it out yet. And I'm so, so thankful that I got saved those many years ago. Because you know what? The path that I was headed down probably would have took me down the same path of the young man we did the memorial service for yesterday. And can I tell you what that's also done for me, Julie? When I see other people like him, I don't really look at him and say, what idiots, what jerks, what fools. I look at them and realize they need to be reached. They need to be reached at all cost. They need to be reached. And I wish, I wish I would have had the opportunity to get to him before he did what he did. But can I tell you another change in my perception, Jim Brun? Some people might have wrote him off because of what he did, but can I tell you something I know about God? He doesn't leave you alone. He knew about God. I found out, Dave, that his whole family, Pentecostal people, I was like, ooh, he knew what prayer was. He knew who God was. Pastor, you're trying to put something. No, I'm not. I'm going to tell you something. God never leaves you alone. Amen. How do you know that? Because something changed my perception on that, one, that, on that very thing one day too, saints. God doesn't leave you alone. I've talked to many of former drunks that Jesus speaks to them on bar stools. Amen. Through a drunken stupor, through a drunken haze, God is still speaking to them. See, my eyesight, my perception of Jesus, my perception of God, my thoughts have changed on what he is capable of doing, what he will do if we will allow him to do it. And saints, I want you to understand something this morning. If God truly has a call on your life, the reason your life is not going the way you think it should go is because of you. Amen. I want God to forgive me of all my sins. We read it in Sunday school this morning. You have to forgive others of their sins. I don't want to do that. Right? I don't want to do that. I learned a long time ago, you don't have to like everybody. Pastor, this isn't good preaching. I don't like everybody, I'm sorry to tell you. I do love them. And I mean that sincerely. I don't want anything to happen to him. I like to see him slapped around from time to time. That's it. That's all right. I got way off there, didn't I? Anyway. I was doing good at that point. But, but notice what verse 23 says, but when your eye is bad. Anybody here have bad eyesight? Think before you raise your hand. <laughs> here we go. But when your eye is bad. Anybody ever think, man, my eyesight's getting really, really bad, and then you look at your glasses, and they're just simply dirty? <laughs> when you take a little bit of Windex or something, and you clean it off, it's like, whoa, I can see really good right now. Sometimes, saints, just to steal from another part of Scripture right now, sometimes we have a little bitty splinter or something in there that's just simply blocking our eyesight, that's simply skewing the things that we see. It hinders us in perceiving things the proper way. Pastor, what is that? I don't know. You tell me. It can be real or not real, Brother Messer. It can be big or ridiculously small, regardless. If it is something in there that's blocking your vision, you have to get rid of it. You have to get rid of it. Why? Because... 
according to what I'm reading here, if you allow those things to stay there, a term comes to mind, Brother Jay, guess what? You're operating in the flesh. You're operating by things that you see. And how many of you know when you operate by things that you see, you're pretty much destined to make mistakes, amen? Because when you're walking with Jesus Christ, sometimes you got to operate by faith. Sometimes the things that you see, they don't make any sense. Sometimes the people in your path, you're like, they don't make any sense. God, why are they here? We've had people walk in here before. I'm like, Lord, why are they here? I'm not being funny, but God, why are they here? I can't reach them. I don't know what to say to them. I don't know what to do for them. But how many of you know sometimes, and here comes my change of thinking, my perception is, sometimes it's not that you have to do anything. Sometimes it's just you making them feel welcome in this place so that he can do what he has to do in that situation. Us guys, we think sometimes, Robert, that we have the answer to everything. We've got to have our hands in everything. We've got to fix everything. Sometimes God doesn't want you to fix anything. Sometimes he just simply wants you to be the vehicle, the conduit, if you will, to getting that person to where they need to go. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me read on here just a little bit more. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness. Can I just teach here for a moment? And if the light you think you have is actually darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness. How many of you know that there have been some things that you have been taught over the years that are just simply wrong? There are some things that you have been taught over the years that are just simply wrong. Would you agree with that? Would you agree that not everything you've heard in church is true? Except for when Pastor Wayne tells you that he's awesome. Yeah. Growing up through the church, and you've heard me say this in the past, Mom, not everything that I was taught was true. Some of what I was taught was based on what somebody else thought was true. And because somebody else thought that was true, they taught it to me as if it was truth. Amen. And how many of you know that there are people out there that will fervently teach a lie? Amen. Fervently teach a lie. They will build denominations on lies. I'm going to say this. A lie will take a whole group of people to hell because they choose to believe it. Amen. Can I tell you something? I believe in the Spirit of God. I believe the Spirit talks to us, Tom Beach. I believe he talks to us very loud and very clear. And I believe this. When somebody teaches you something and your spirit jumps up and says, wait a second. You had better be listening to what the Spirit is telling you. Because if you entertain that teaching, if you entertain that doctrine and you allow it to become a part of who you are, you're going to change your perception of life for the rest of your life. You have to be careful in what you allow to come into your soul. Amen. Pastor, how do I do that? Reading your Bible is not just fulfilling an obligation right. as a Christian. It's not just fulfilling an obligation because your Sunday school teacher, Lori, told you to read your Bible. Reading your Bible is to edify you. Reading your Bible is to teach you. Reading your Bible is to arm you. So that way, when you hear those things, you immediately dismiss those things. You immediately dismiss those things, Ronald, because you don't want them to have an impact on the way you look at life. You know what I've learned as pastor? Sometimes you have to deprogram people. Right. Pastor, what do you mean by deprogramming people? I can't even talk this morning. Blah, blah, blah. 
Sometimes they have bounced around so much. Sometimes they have played into things so much. So t- so they've listened to everybody, thinking everybody has a little... Not everybody has a good word for you. Not everything out there is good for you. Somebody say amen. So you have to examine yourselves this morning, saints of God. The things you have been taught over the years, have they edified you? Have they lifted you up? Have they strengthened you? Have they made you look at this world differently? Or have they just simply clouded your view over time? I think I should have never got glasses. Because ever since I got glasses, my eyesight's gotten worse. Some people might say, well, it's just because you're getting old. Not true. I'm always young. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Wayne. Help me out there, brother. I saw him. Yeah, Wayne, preach. He drives up, to Barber, drives up from Barberville because I'm awesome. There it is. Shut up, Amanda. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is that darkness? You decide this morning, saints. You decide. Here's how I'm going to end. I told class this morning, and Lori can back me up on this, that when the good Lord was tugging on us to start preaching, to start pastoring, we fought it. We fought it hard. Some of you guys said, wait a minute, Pastor, I've heard you say this so many times. We did. We fought it hard. And along that way, as I said in Sunday school this morning, I've had people say to me, Wayne, you're only doing this for yourself. You're only doing this to puff yourself up. You're only doing it for position. You're only doing it because you want to be in the spotlight. I fought that. You know why? Because I don't want to be in the spotlight. That's me by nature. I don't want to be. And Lori, the fight, help me out here. The fight we went through during that time, it was horrible. It was vicious. We were fighting. He and I were fighting. Me and my family were fighting. Patty, it was difficult. It was hard. And I'm going to tell you, for the next couple of years, Norman, it sure did impact my vision of things. Whenever a trouble would come my way, Sarah, you know what I would do? Man, why? Am I doing something wrong? Is somebody setting me up? Is somebody trapping me? Is somebody tricking me? Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I shouldn't have done this. Maybe I made the wrong decision. What was I basing it on? I was basing it on all the things that had happened to me up to that point. I'm teaching you from my learning here. One day you get to the point and you realize those people really didn't have anything to do with it. They were just used at that moment. You know what they were used for? Sarah, here's my change in thought. They were used to bump me into the right direction. They were used to put me on the right path. They were used to get me going in the direction that God wanted me to go. They were used to make me think the way God wanted me to think. I'm about to get happy on that one. They were used to make me think the way God wanted me to think. They were used to make me rely on God the way he wants me to rely on him. Do you understand that this morning? Those people that you think are your enemy, they're chess pieces. God put them there on purpose. The trials that you have dealt with, they have been put there on purpose because if you truly trust in the Lord, They are moving you in a direction that He wants you to go. They are putting you in a path that He wants you to be on. They are leading you to a place that He wants you to be in. Do you understand that? John 14 and 1, Jesus said it. We used this at the funeral yesterday. Don't let your hearts be troubled, Norman Rice. You believe in God, you also believe in me. And that word believe there means that I have full faith, I have stock in, I trust, I have no doubt. Do you believe that this morning? I have full faith in him, I trust him. I've put a lot of stock in him. Can I say this? 
He has proved himself to me. I felt good saying that. He has proved himself to me. Please stand, please. Can I ask you this? Has he proved himself to you yet? Has he proved himself to you yet? Can I tell you something? Brother Mike, he's done it to me more and more and more and more. You know what he does? Brother Art, when my life is chaotic, anybody ever have chaotic times in your life? I kind of step back and realize, Brother Tom, that's when he's using me the most. When I can't even think. You ever had those times? Things are just going so you can't even think. Yesterday morning we got up early. We had to go to NKU with Wayne. We were talking to professors. We were talking to leaders of departments. We were having a good, we were dreaming with him yesterday. Then we went on to an appreciation luncheon. And then we went on to a funeral. My suit was in my truck. I got here. I went to the bathroom and changed went from one role to another but you know what the Lord was doing to me and through me through all that ministering to a whole bunch of people I got to tell people at NKU I'm a pastor and that's my boy the one lady she just said okay that's great let's talk about what he can do I don't care I'm a pastor and that's my boy Ministering to people that work all the time in the church. You know what? Those are my people. I love them. And you know what? A church cannot function without people who work, who will not work. In the, you got to have them. And then sometimes, Brother Dallas, you minister to people you don't even know. How many of you know that everywhere you go in life, there are people that are either being ministered to by you or being hurt by you. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Brother Ed, being a pastor, you know what's done to me? It's changed the way I look at people. When I look at you, I was watching you this morning. You were driving in ahead of me. I was like, that is one awesome fellow. When he first walked in, wasn't so sure. you know what it tells me though Maxine it tells me that if somebody gets in and they hang on to the Lord over time things will change oh their eyesight changes they see things in the church that I don't see but you know what they're seeing them now how can we better this church how can we make this church stronger how can we perform our tasks easier they see things differently. Angie, they see things different than I do. It's not wrong. It's good. Brother Ed, when God brings people in, you're not perfect. I know that. I ain't either. But it's amazing, and I've learned this, Sarah. God takes imperfect people, puts them together, and does some pretty awesome stuff. So, Brian, when I see him, when I see you, I think, Lord, awesome potential there. Dave Turner, wherever he went to, when we first saw him, I thought, Lord, that's going to be a tough one. woo Man. Everybody knows Dave Turner now. He's the fat, loudmouth preacher. He said it himself. Amen. But I'll tell you something. They all know him. He's the guy with the get-out-of-jail-free cards. He's the guy that likes to play tricks with you with cards. He's the guy, when he starts talking to you, Good luck getting away from him is all I got to say. Good luck. And when he talks, there's some enthusiasm in his voice. There's some power in his voice. What happened? Katie, his eyesight was changed. His vision was changed. His perception was changed. 
He examined himself. He had been taught some bad things, Jessica, but you know what? God changed those things. He got it out. Can I tell you something this morning? How are you viewing God? How are you viewing God? If you're viewing God as this big, mean ogre, it's probably because you don't really know him very well. If you're viewing God as this judgmental God that's waiting to pounce on you, it's probably because you continue to sin and you've never given it all over to him. See, it's based on what you're doing. But if you're looking at it thinking, oh, Brother Dallas, this is a very loving, a very merciful God. You know, how, you know why you look at him that way? Because he's forgiven you of much. Oh, my goodness, saints, he's forgiven me of much. He's helped me through so much stuff. He's my God. He's my God. Pastor, he's mine too, I know. But he's my God. I love him. I want to serve him. I want to be used by him, Norman. Why? Man, listen, the things he's done for me, you all don't have time. The things he's done for me, you don't have time. You don't have time. Brother Mike, the things he's done for me, buddy, you don't have time. He's been good. Will you bow your heads, please? If you're here this morning and God has spoken to your heart at some point, would you please, 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 if he's tugged on your heart wanting you to come to an altar of prayer, would you please come to the altar right now? and invite him into your soul. Would you do that, please? Listen, saints, if you've got somebody next to you, you've got one person come to the altar now, if you've got somebody next to you that you think needs to pray, you may want to work on them, ask them, just simply ask them, do you want to go pray? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid at all. Go. Go pray. God is real. I know he's in this place. Some people might say, Pastor, I can't see him. I see him. Oh, my goodness, I see him. I feel him. I hear him. I know he's here. Do you know he's here? Mr. Clayton. Let me ask you this. Is your view of life, is your view of the Lord, is it impaired any at all? Can I tell you this? If you look at him as somebody as mean, somebody as difficult, somebody as harsh, you need to come up here and pray and really get to know him right now. Come on. If your view, if your thought every time you come to the church is negative, you need to come and pray. Let the Lord cleanse that. Let him get that out of you. I've learned that the more you know God, the more you love people. The more you know God, the more you view life completely differently. The closer you get to him, the more stuff you go through with him, the more you view life completely differently. I'm just going to call the church to prayer if you want to, either in your seat or in the altars. If you've got somebody next to you you think needs to pray, invite them to go to the altar with you. Would you please invite them to go to the altar with you? Please. Come on, saints. Find a place to pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
the sun Forbear to shine But God who called me here below Will be forever mine You are forever mine My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my sin Like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see It was grace that taught my fears really how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed is God good yes We have another service tonight. If you folks want to come back and be part of our second service tonight, God is really good. I personally, over the years, you know, some people might say, Pastor, I don't have time for a second service. That's on you. That's between you and the Lord. That's cool. But me, I, I got to have it because I'm weak. I'm going to tell you. Without God, I am weak. I have to have it. And I mean that sincerely. I'm not saying that. I, I, I have to have it. I've grown accustomed to it. Amen. So if you can, please come back tonight. Musicians, I would love for you to stick around. I want to chat with you for a moment. And actually, even sound people, because there are some things we have to work out with the soundboard. Um, so if you could, please stick around after church. If you can't stay long, maybe we'll try to set up another time to do it. But we have to work some things out. Is God good? Let's all stand, please. Thank you. Again, I want to acknowledge... Um, the people that came out yesterday and just poured into that family yesterday. I'm telling you, you may have thought, Wayne, all I did was hand out chicken and pork and potatoes. And you know what? Jesus was a servant and he told us to serve. And I'm going to tell you, serving people goes a long way. A long way. I was in here getting done with the... Uh, funeral shaking hands I could smell bleach coming out of the kitchen I'm like thank you God they're cleaning up yay I mean I was, it was you don't know I mean it is a blessing because it does it makes ministry a whole lot easier when folks are just doing it and you're not having to tell them everything and they're just doing it God bless you I'm telling you God bless you for doing that and if there's anybody else here that 
you want to get involved on those events, man, when we're saying that there's an event here that's here to minister to a family, show up. Even if you're just shaking hands, you know, giving people a tissue, whatever, I'm telling you, it goes a long way. Amen. How will they know that you're a Christian or a follower of Christ? By your love. Not by your hair, not by your clothing, by your love. You know that, right? So they know, those people know we love them, and I'm going to tell you, it went a long way, and I promise you they will remember that. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful to be in your house this morning, God. Thankful for your blessings. Thankful for your word. Thankful for this opportunity to praise you, God. Father, go with us today, God. Help us to share with others the things you have spoken to us this morning. God, help us to be great lights of this world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Shake hands and be friendly, would you please? <clears throat> Musicians, come on up front here for a moment. And I need to see the praise and worship team, too. So... Clayton, go ahead and turn that music off. <laughs> 